Welcome to Mad Shoe Capital. Stocks will always have a part in a well-diversified portfolio, but I'm going to tell you today about alternative investment ideas that will not only help you further diversify, but also potentially help you achieve market-beating returns. These four areas were selected based on risk tolerance, personal interest, and past performance. Let's dive in. Until very recently, it was not possible for the average investor to be involved in the rare private art markets. This market is tremendous. It's estimated by Forbes to be $1.7 trillion, so definitely something we'd love to be a part of. But there were a lot of barriers to entry, including large upfront costs, guaranteeing authenticity, storage, insurance, and the whole resale process to finding the right buyer in the future. The great news is there's a company that has mastered all of these challenges, and it's called Masterworks.io. They take care of all the complexities by finding undervalued rare art, making sure it's authentic, insuring it, storing it, securing it, and holding it for a period of three to 10 years where they'll plan to resell it in the future. Now to help the individual investor get involved, they figured out a way to securitize this investment by selling fractional shares in these works of art. And they've done it in an SEC compliant way that pleases the regulators. So let's walk through an example of how this works. So say they're considering buying a rare Picasso painting, and this is something you'd be interested in having a fractional stake in. So what they would do is they would buy that painting and they would sell shares to the general public that allows you to have perhaps one one millionth of that painting. And as that painting hopefully appreciates over time, you get to enjoy the prorated appreciation of that painting. So that would mean if the painting went up 10% in value, you get to enjoy a 10% return based on your share percentage in that painting. Now the average investor, and this is an asset class that has appreciated on average over the past 25 years, 13.25%, well above the major market indexes such as the S&P 500. So awesome opportunity to consider in the future and allow you to participate in the rare art marketplace. Another alternative investment asset class that I find very exciting is the private real estate market. This is an area that I've been personally involved in for over a decade and I've done very well from a rental real estate opportunity perspective. There are a lot of barriers to entry to do this on your own. As a rental property, you have to come up with a 25% down payment. You have to find properties that are undervalued, have good appreciation potential and rental income. And then you have to deal with the whole property management process of finding, screening tenants, taking care of the property, and overall maintaining things to keep operations running smoothly. I'm pleased to inform you that there's a new opportunity to get involved in private real estate that doesn't have you becoming a property management or real estate expert. And it's called Fundrise. And they essentially offer you the opportunity to get involved in private real estate on a fractional ownership basis. So essentially what they do is they go out, find quality private real estate, purchase it, make improvements if necessary, and then in the future, they either resell it or they lease it out to make rental income from it. Then they would sell to you, the individual, fractional shares ownership in a variety of properties. And they have all kinds of different risk profiles and areas you can choose from, allowing you to be very focused in the types of real estate that you believe in, depending on if you are looking for more income to pay your current expenses, or you're looking for long-term appreciation if you're trying to grow your investments as much as possible in the near term. So they've done this in an SEC regulator approved way that allows you to participate without being an accredited investor, which makes this available for everyone. So essentially they buy the property, they sell you fractional share ownership in those properties and then you get to enjoy the proceeds of that process for a small management fee lower than most real estate investment trusts. So great way to participate in the real estate market. It has shown recently to not be as correlated with stocks. So it really helps with your diversity. 
and the average returns investors in the fund have seen recently has been over 12% average per year, and they haven't had a negative year yet. So definitely something to consider to further diversify your portfolio if you're interested in getting involved in private real estate. The next asset class we're gonna talk about is the luxury watch marketplace. This is a really exciting area to get involved because it allows you to own an investment that you can wear and enjoy every day, but also potentially achieve some appreciation over the long term. I recently got involved in this area about one year ago during some of the heights of the pandemic that saw a huge downtick in the value of watches. So I thought this might be an interesting opportunity to start getting involved in. Let's first distinguish what makes a brand luxury. It's not the typical model you'd see in your local department store or online for a few hundred dollars. These are the timeless name brands that start in the thousands and can easily go into the millions depending on its rarity. The types of things you want to look for in a luxury watch brand is name recognition, a multi-decade track record, and celebrity endorsements that really help push the value along. It's best to start with a case study of a classic example that. So the model we're going to talk about and show on screen is the Rolex Submariner. This is a stainless steel dive watch that's been around since at least the 50s and it's been featured in several James Bond films on the wrist of Sean Connery. The model we're gonna look at is the one that started being produced in the 2010 timeframe. They get refreshed about every 10 years or so. So this seemed like a good recent snapshot to take a look at. So the Rolex Submariner stainless steel model sold for about $5,500 new in 2010. If you were to try and buy this model today on the used market, you'd have to pay almost $15,000 to achieve that. That's a two and a half times return in about 12 years. Pretty amazing for something you could wear, enjoy every day, but also have this certainty or potential certainty of knowing that you could resell it if you ever need to raise some cash quickly. Not bad. I'm also wearing another competitor to the Rolex Submariner, the Omega Seamaster 300M, and this is a model that's also a diver, stainless steel. I purchased it in the summer of 2021, and it's already appreciated, according to Chrono24, about $500 since I bought it. It's been an amazing watch. I've got to enjoy it every day. It's been a lot of fun, and it's great to know that I'm actually making money on it as I own it, so that if I ever needed to resell it in the future, recover some cash, take advantage of another investment, I have that opportunity to consider. So definitely exciting class to check out if you want an investment you can touch, hold, enjoy, and also make some money on. The last asset class we're gonna talk about is the most speculative of all, and this is the collectibles market. So to give a current example, that for the baby boomer generation, there was a lot of interest in American muscle cars. And during the gas shortages in the 70s and 80s, a lot of people switched over to fuel efficient cars, and many of these cars were lost. But in the later years in retirement, many of these folks wanted to rekindle that nostalgia and buy those classic big engine cars. So this created huge premiums and demand, which has established a multi-billion dollar collector's marketplace. Now, the interesting thing is, as generational preferences change, this market will probably continue to shrink more and more as time proceeds but every generation has its own interest in nostalgia and there's ways to capitalize on this. Thinking of examples from my childhood, which was the late 90s, uh, early 2000s, I was interested in the Pokemon trading card game as well as video games. So over time, I built up large collections of both of these. So starting first with Pokemon, this was a trading card game much like any other sports trading cards, where you would buy a pack at your local toy or department store for about $5, and in that pack, you would get 10 cards. And in many ways, this was gambling for kids because there was always a chance that you get a rare holographic Pokemon card in the pack that was very desirable, but you never knew when you were gonna get one. And this was especially difficult if you're trying to get a specific Pokemon card because you could have to buy tens, if not hundreds of packs for the random chance to get the card you're looking for. So over time, I bought packs, was gifted packs, 
and I never played the game. I just put all the cards in a binder, looked at them, enjoyed them for a few years, and then forgot about them. They were placed in the attic, and essentially I didn't think another thing about them for 10, 20 years. This happened with a lot of other people as well, but in most cases, parents just threw the cards out because interest was lost and there was nothing more to, to do with them. Fast forward to the pandemic and people from my generation were feeling nostalgic and they were looking to rekindle that spirit of fun and buy their childhood collections back. Well, this created tremendous demand and I pulled these cards out of the attic. They were still in great shape and I was able to resell individual cards for tens to hundreds of dollars, depending on their rarity. So it was very, I was able to clear out a lot of these cards that I didn't even really want anymore and turn them into a good sum of cash. There were a couple of very rare cards that I kept that were in good condition that I also wanted to take the risk of grading professionally because if they come back in great condition, you can really get some very high returns on those. So I sent away two Charizard cards, one a 1996 Japanese version and another American 1999 unlimited version. And they came back on a scale of one to 10 at nine and 10 respectively. This was huge because this meant I now had cards worth about $1,200 and $6,000 each. So tremendous opportunity and home run that I could have never expected to get a multi thousand percent return but just goes to show you if you find the right collectible the sky's the limit. Another collectible that I was very interested in uh, was video games so for m my generation it was the Super Nintendo and the Nintendo 64 so I kept all of these games I played them for years put them away when I was not using them and essentially forgot about them for a while. Fast forward to 2019, 2020, and I'm looking for a down payment for a house. And just by selling off these video games, I was able to pull together the majority of the down payment just from my childhood nostalgia, which was amazing. In addition to that, in the mid 2000s, I was speculating on rare sealed Super Nintendo games. So I bought my favorite childhood Super Nintendo game, Zelda A Link to the Past, in sealed, unopened condition from 1992. This game I sent away for grading, and it came back with a really high A plus seal, 9.2 rating, and it's conservatively valued today at around $4,000. So that, again, was another home run opportunity for an investment that I spent $50 on back in the mid 2000s. So high risk, high return investment class, but collectibles can be definitely worth um, your consideration. Just make sure that there's the right kind of rarity, nostalgia to create the real potential for future returns. So to sum it all up, we've talked about four alternative investment classes that can help you further diversify and enhance your portfolio returns. They include the rare art market, private real estate, fractional ownership, the luxury watch market, and the collectibles market. Each have their own pros and cons that you should pursue with your own due diligence to make sure the risk profile meets your needs. Thank you for participating, and please like, subscribe, and comment on the video content. This is a huge help in making sure the channel continues to expand and get shared with new audiences. And I look forward to making more quality content for you in the future to help your personal finance. Thank you.